taking off on another level. They all on me, one in the scoop. I told them off the record. I'm in the lead, they check for me. I guess they peeped the message. Wait, I deliver like trending news for like your favorite broadcast. I get the streets talking, just like a correspondent. It's three, two, one, and I'ma go like lights, camera, action. So it be with a passion. I get the beats cracking, all on their feeds. Actual tease, guess I'm the trending topic. Yeah, I got the scoop, 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 I got the scoop. Hello, Governor State. I'm Keely Doms. Welcome back from spring break. And I'm Jalen Water. Welcome to TWAG News. Thanks to a partnership with Marcon, we are your source of what's happening at Gov State. During this Women's History Month, starting March 18th, Governor State will be conducting a campus-wide event called Empower Her. The event is hosted by the International Culture Organization. This campaign allows support to women in need. It will last until March 29th and has multiple locations for donors around campus. For more information, visit their website. It's time for spring cleaning and for the spring cleaning clothes drive. Stop by Hall of Governors March 19th and 20th from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Students are encouraged to bring clothes and other household items to help support international missionaries all over the world. Contrib contribute by cleaning out your closets, please bring clean clothes only. No, clo no dirty clothes will be accepted. I know we just finished midterms, but finals will approach quickly. Are you ready to write those papers? The Writing Center is equipped to enhance the abilities of students crafting exceptional papers. They have one-on-one -on -one services as well as workshops. These workshops are designed to provide students with the necessary tools to excel in academic writing. Check out their website for the wide array of topics and tutoring. Mental health is a concern on many college campuses. Governor State is no different, and they've hired a special friend to help. Field reporter Dominic Del Polo introduces us to that friend. Mental health is a growing concern in the nation, but especially with college students. Gov State has many resources, but have you met Sandy? Sandy is a certified therapy dog who engages with students all over campus. You can find Sandy in the library on Tuesdays between 4 to 5.30 p.m. We talked to Sandy's owner to find out how our tail wagging friend's story began. Uh, she's been coming six years to Governor State University. So she started uh, uh, just coming, uh, after she got certified as a therapy dog, uh, they wanted, uh, I brought her in over a break one time to visit some of the faculty and stuff over Christmas break. And the library said, uh, asked us if we can bring her on a regular basis. So we started bringing her every week. And uh, after she got certified uh, and I brought her in and they asked, well, you know, can you bring her in more often? And this way students get to interact with her more. A lot of students leave their uh, animals at home. They're in an apartment, they can't have a dog or a mouse. So this gives them a dog to interact with and play with and pet. The way I've actually heard about Sandy was actually seeing, um, what are they, like the posters on campus or uh, different flyers that I would see around or even on the GSU website where it would be like, yo, come see Sandy, the therapy dog. I'm like, yo, that's Sandy. Sandy is uh, honestly a very warm and welcoming dog. Um, even with uh, seeing uh, Professor Hisney and going into his class at times and just seeing Sandy there, it's like she's always welcoming, but at the same time, it's like, yo, that's my dog. I'm Dominic Dalpolo reporting for TWAG. Back to you in the studio. Thanks, Dominic. Great story. And a great service. I need to get up there one of these Tuesdays for sure. Me too. Who doesn't like the comfort of a dog? This school year is slowly coming to an end, and that means commencement time. The commencement ceremony is a time to celebrate graduates obtaining their degrees. This is a call for faculty and staff volunteers for May 17th and 18th at 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. Commencement takes place at the Tinley Park Convention Center. This is a great opportunity to help create a memorable experience for the graduates. Interested parties can volunteer for, these, for the date and the time they are available. Deadline is March 21st. After this short break, we will be discussing some new shows in the Center for Performing Arts. Stay tuned to see.
Welcome back. It is no secret that Governor State Center for Performing Arts brings amazing shows that awe and excite us. But did you know that they also have stage performances, performances from groups right here on campus? The Gov State Dance Company will be presenting two powerful shows. The dance company will be performing Body Language on Thursday, March 28th at 7.30 p.m. and on Saturday, March 30th at 2.30 p.m. Body Language is lovingly described as a cultural storytelling through dance. This mesmerizing show features the incredible Gov State Dance Company and talented guest performers. As the CPA website states, you will be taken on a journey that explores diverse perspectives and presents cultural kaleidoscope of movement. This show bring, proves that the dance truly is a universal language. Tickets available on CPA website. Coming up, we have Zion Banks and our very special guest, President Cheryl Green. We will be right back. Education, I'm educated. Read my books and watch my news, yeah, I stay updated. And my ballet got the school assignments motivated. And I feel just like I'm twack cause I stay with the latest. Yeah, 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 yeah I feel just yeah, like yeah. I'm twack, come catch up with me, baby. Said I feel just like I'm twack, they watch me on the daily. Yeah, I feel just like I'm twack, they trying to syndicate yeah, yeah, yeah. me. Said I feel just like I'm twack, representing of state. Uh, yeah, I got the scoop, 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 I got the scoop. Hi, I'm Zion Banks. I'm the manager of media relations here at Governor State University, and I'm so thrilled to be here today with Dr. Cheryl Green, who is the president. She has brought more than 30 years of experience in education. Uh, she comes to us from the UW system, where at one point she served as chancellor at the Whitewater campus, among other roles. She is our sixth president and a native of the South Side of Chicago. Welcome, Dr. Green. All right, thank you for having me here. It's so nice to be here with you. I feel like we've been walking this journey together since 2020. We have. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, there have just been so many milestones, so many accomplishments. So we'll just start with the most recent, your recognition from Susanna Mendoza, the state comptroller, as well as your opportunity to address uh, the public meeting at the Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated Regional Conference. Yes. So congratulations on many, many milestones and many, many more to come. Thank you. So it is Women's History Month. It is. And uh, this year, the Women's History Month is recognizing women throughout the country who understand that for a positive future, we need to eliminate bias and discrimination entirely mm -hmm. from our lives and our institutions. Kind of sounds like you were on that committee. <laughs> <laughs> How does the theme resonate with you? Well, you know, this is the 21st century. It is completely unacceptable to have bias and discrimination in our society. No group of human beings should have their capacity and their potential limited by those tools of oppression. Mm -hmm. I just think that we are beyond that. We're bigger than that. Mm -hmm. And everyone deserves an opportunity to live their life to the fullest without any marginalization. Okay. So when you talk when you talk about marginalization to me I hear that our humanity mm -hmm. is denied when we are victims Absolutely. of oppression or discrimination. So it's kind of a circular uh, logic is like, you know, bias and discrimination are tools of oppression mm -hmm. that um, oppress people and deny humanity. Right. So Absolutely. Okay. I agree with that premise. Totally. So, oh, it's yours. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you are living history um, as the first African-American woman to lead Governor State University in this 55-year history. What does that mean to you? Well, it means that I didn't do this by myself. And okay. so I'm not going to pat myself on the back. I'm just going to try to be prepared to lead this awesome university. And it means that I'm standing on the shoulders yeah. of people, and in particular women, who came before me. I mean, uh, I look to women like Rosa Parks 
There's a phrase in our community that she sat down so that I could stand up. And what that means is she made a conscious decision that she would change her behavior, that she would no longer allow the Jim Crow laws of, laws of the South to rule the day, that she was tired and she wanted better for herself and for her people. And her resistance sparked the civil rights movement. And so that's just powerful. It also means that for me as a leader of a university, education is a tool for change. Nelson Mandela said that education is the most powerful weapon that you can use to change the world. And I agree with him. And I hope that I am using education to transform lives here at Gulf State. Well, you are, if I may say that, you mm -hmm. are definitely using your position as president as well as a lifelong educator mm -hmm. to, to change lives here. But speaking of change, there's so much going on in the country. And I'm just thinking about the diversity and equity theme of uh, Women's History Month this year. And uh, just given what's going on in the country, what would you say to aspiring leaders? Well, I would say don't fall into the trap of denying people the opportunity to have equity. Mm -hmm. Don't fall into the trap of eliminating, uh, advocating for justice mm -hmm. and for inclusion because if we're going to have a thriving society, we're going to have to help and we're going to have to reach out to and we're going to have to make sure we connect with all people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's where that advocacy for mm -hmm. equity, diversity, and inclusion comes into play. And as future leaders of not only educational institutions but other organizations, we have to have that like-mindedness so that we are making sure that we are helping all people thrive. Correct. Not just women, not just you know particular genders, I mean everyone. Well, That's when we advocate for equity and inclusion and diversity, we're advocating for men, for women, for the youth, for the elderly, for the disabled, for people of color, for LGBTQ, mm -hmm, we're, mm -hmm. we're advocating for everyone. Mm -hmm. And that's what inclusion means. Yeah, it's a, it's a great theme this year. Mm -hmm. um, so turning to Governor State, or Gov State as we now call ourselves, mm -hmm. we've discussed many times, many, many times, how you hit the ground running in 2020, the height of the pandemic. Um, you've accomplished so much uh, we've sent a student to the White House. <laughs> yes, we did. We sure <laughs> we've did. We've been acknowledged by the IBHE. Mm -hmm. uh, we've created law school pathways. I mean, yes. it just goes on and on. Um, what's next for you here at Governor's Day? Well, you know, number one on my to-do list, and for every president, I'm sure, is adequate funding for the university. Mm -hmm. um, more than half of our budget comes from tuition but the uh, approximately 40 plus percent comes from the state appropriations. Mm -hmm. And over the last two decades, that amount of state appropriations has declined. And so I have to be on fire with advocating for adequate funding for the university so mm -hmm. we can continue to be accessible and exceptional. Um, and what else is next is I want to see our buildings get developed. The master plan. We have plan. a capital master plan mm -hmm. that includes a new student center. It includes more classroom buildings. It includes a new library. And we deserve to have those quality facilities on our campus for our students mm -hmm. and our university community. So I'm very focused on that. Uh, I'm, a, I'm excited about um, our growth of our athletic teams. Mm. Congratulations. Today I heard that um, Coach T Mac was named Coach of the Year. Yes. The CCAC. Yes, we're very proud of her, our women's basketball coach. Mm. We're just very proud of her. But we've grown our athletics teams from the June, we've added junior varsity teams mm -hmm. to the varsity lineup. We've added more sports. We have over nine sports now. And so we want students to have a vibrant 
uh, life outside mm -hmm. of the classroom as Correct. well as inside the classroom. Mm -hmm. So your, um, your pride is radiant in the community. I mean, mm -hmm. it's, you know, when you see you walking around campus, you're glowing. It's mm -hmm. like you can tell mm -hmm. you're proud. What really delights you here? You know, I'm delighted about the fact that, and this may sound mundane, but this delights me. We have been reaccredited in so many of our signature academic programs mm -hmm. in the health sciences, in the arts, in education, and the College of Business. That mm -hmm. is powerful. I'm delighted about the additional sculptures that we've added Beautiful. with the Nathan Manilow mm -hmm. Sculpture Park. You know as well as I do that we have been rated number one and number two sculpture park mm -hmm. in the country. Mm -hmm. yep. And so I'm very proud of that. I can't go out in the community without somebody telling me either about the Nate or about the CPA, a program they Absolutely. went to here, Absolutely. you know, and how they enjoyed themselves. We just had Shin Young the other day, and you can't walk on this campus when that uh, venue <laughs> sure. comes or to GSU. Or park in the parking lot. Or park in the parking <laughs> lot. You know, so I'm delighted about that. I'm just, you know, delighted about so many things well, that are happening. Well, your number one initiative when you came was to uh, remove the hidden from the gym. So right, right. congratulations on that. The other thing I'm excited about is the Social Justice Institute. Yes, yes. You know, I we can talk about being committed to social justice. It's a part of our core values. But when we operationalize that in the form of a building that will house programming and training and events and serve the needs of the community like with our free legal aid clinic. Absolutely. I'm just so proud of that and, and there's you know I can't say enough about that as well as some other things on campus. I forgot about that I apologize. No no problem. So um, as we close out I just want to say do you have any final comments that you'd like to share with the community? Yes, I would like to say that we have some challenges ahead. Mm. The country has some challenges ahead. Gov state has some challenges ahead, but we have weathered challenges in the past. We have weathered the budget impasse. We survived. Not that. only are we surviving, but we are thriving, you know. Uh, we have weathered the raging pandemic. Mm -hmm. I can't tell you what was going on in my mind July 1, 2020, <laughs> when I came here in the middle of world chaos. Right. Not national, world chaos. And we've also weathered that. We opened our own clinic. I remember that. <laughs> at Gov State so that we could protect our community members mm -hmm. from this terrible disease. Mm -hmm. And I was. I'm tremendously proud of that because we were going to, you know, the local officials and waiting in right. those lines. But when we made the decision to bring, what was it oh, like? we're going to do our own clinic. Exactly. That is Gov State. <laughs> that is Gov State. And I'm very proud of that. And we've had leadership changes, myself being a product of that. And so there have been many things that people have had to adjust to, to navigate and to become accustomed to, but we're going to be fine. And I'm just very proud of all that we've accomplished together because together we can do anything. And together we must because we have lives to change. We still have work to do. And communities to save. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Green. As always, it's been a pleasure talking with you. I always learn so much when I sit and talk with you. Um, that's it. That's my close. Thank you so <laughs> much. Thank you for having me. Sure. Okay. What a great interview. Did you know that President Green was accomplished so, has accomplished so much? She is truly an inspiration for Women's History Month. All right, that is all we have time for today, my fellow Jaguars. From everyone here in Studio B, I'm Kaylee Doms. And I'm Jalen Woodard, and you have been twagged. Deliver like turn the news for like your favorite broadcast. Yeah, yeah, I get yeah, the streets yeah, talking. Yeah, yeah.